Hi everyone, this is video 9b of the Regents Chemistry Curriculum. Uh, today our topic is nuclear chemistry and we're going to be calculating uh, the half-life uh, of different radioactive isotopes and we're also going to be answering a bunch of other half-life questions. So let's get started. Here are some statements. Please read over the statements. See if you can tell whether these statements are true or false. If you cannot decide whether they're true or false, please wait until the end of the video and you should be able to determine that by then. Pause the video, read the statements, and let's get started. Here we have table N. Table N uh, has a bunch of radioactive isotopes. All of these uh, are radioactive isotopes. And it also mentions the half-life of each isotope. Now you may ask, what is a half-life? A half-life is the time that it takes for half the mass of a sample of any of those radioactive isotopes to decay. And by decay, we're saying to con half the mass is going to be converted to energy and you won't be able to see it anymore. So, for example, if you have 100 grams of AU198, after 2.695 days, you're not going to have 100 grams anymore. You're going to have only 50 grams. Okay? And the other 50 grams are going to convert to uh, energy in the form of beta particles. These are beta particles. Okay, so now that we understand what half-lives are, uh, let's just look at the units here. You have days, you have years, milliseconds, minutes, seconds, uh, hours, and that's it. Okay, notice how some half-lives are, uh, or some radioactive isotopes take a lot less time to decay than others. Therefore, they have multiple uses. If they have very, if they take very little time to decay, they could possibly be used for medical purposes, medicinal purposes, such as uh, radiation therapy for people who have cancer. If they have, uh, if they take a very long time to decay, then they can be used for uh, dating Earth or uh, dating fossils or other purposes. Okay, so table O has the masses, mass on top, charges at the bottom of a bunch of radioactive isotopes from alpha, beta, gamma, uh, positron, and so on. Okay, now let's try to answer some questions. We're going to start with uh, this question right here. If one eighth, one eighth of an original sample of Krypton 74 remains unchanged after 34.5 minutes, what is the half-life of the Krypton sample? Okay, so by reading this question, we see that one eighth is associated with 34 and a half minutes. So one eighth of the sample remains after 34 and a half minutes. All right. Here I have the double O OG box one table. In the first column, I have just the number of half lives that I'm going to go through. In the second column, I have the time that corresponds with the number of half lives. In the third column, I have the mass. And the original mass must go right next to the letters OG. And in the last column, I have the fraction remaining. So obviously, at time zero, I have the entire sample, full fraction, 100% of the sample. And I have the original mass, and I have not gone through any half-lives. After a single half-life, after a single half-life, 
I have half the original mass remaining. So I'll take the original mass and I divide it by two. And I have gone through a single half-life. So the time for a single half-life, you can get directly from table N, N as in Nancy. However, here I'm actually trying to find out what the time for a single half-life is. So this is what I'm actually looking for, for this question. I don't know that. And I can't go to table N to find it because it's not in table N. So I'm going to complete this table as follows. The number of half-lives, I know I'm just going to go from zero all the way down to whatever number I need to stop at. The fraction, I can just keep multiplying by one half until I get to the one eighth given to me in the question. So one times one half gives me one half. One half times one half gives me one quarter. One, qu uh, one quarter times one half gives me one eighth. And I can keep going, but I don't have to keep going because the question told me to stop at one eighth. And we already know that one eighth is associated with 34 and a half minutes. So since one eighth is in the last row over here, 34 and a half minutes is going to be in the last row. And that's going to correspond with three total half lives. So 34.5 minutes is for three half lives. So divide by three and you will find out what a single half life is. You'll know what the time for a single half life is simply by dividing 34 and a half for three. So because 34 and a half minutes are for three half lives, you ask yourself how much is for one half life. So 34 and a half divided by three will tell you the answer. If you uh, don't want to do it this way, if you don't want to do it this way, you can simply set a fraction, what you know and what you don't know. So this is what you know. You know that 34 and a half minutes are associated with three half lives. And what you don't know is X amount of minutes is associated for with one half life. So the minutes on top, they stay on top. The, tie, the number of half lives at the bottom, they stay at the bottom. Cross multiply. So here I'm going to cross multiply. 3 times x equals to 1 times 34 and a half times 1. Uh, 1 times 34 and a half equals to 3 times x. So 3x, let's just put it over here, 3x equals to 34 and a half times 1. Divide both sides by 3. x will equal to, I believe, about 11 minutes. Okay. So that's how we answer these questions. It's also very important that you notice that if you are asked about the mass, then uh, going down this column, you will be dividing by two. If you are going up that column, you will be multiplying by two. Or you can do it in a different way, an alternative way, and that is simply just keep multiplying the original mass by the fraction. So here you'll multiply the original mass by this fraction, and then by this fraction, by this fraction, to get your answers here, here, and here. Okay. All right. Now, let's try another question. Here we have a another question. Example two. How much time is needed for 200 grams of radon-222 to decay to 3.125 grams? So the same exact situation, I have the number of half-lives here, the time for each half-life, the mass, and the fraction. Okay. My original mass is 200 grams, so I'm going to put the original mass in the OG box. And then I'm going to keep dividing by 2, divide by 2 to get 100, divide by 2 to get a 50, all the way down until I get to my final mass, which is 3.125. Okay. And now I'm going to go to the periodic table to see what the half-life, what a single half-life of radon 222 uh, equal to. Let's see what the time is.
for a single half-life of radon-222. Here's radon-222. A single half-life of radon-222 is 3.823 days. 3.823 days. That's radon. This is radium. Do not mistake. Do not make a mistake. This is radium. This is radon. If you're unsure about which is which, simply just go to table S and you'll know which one is which. Table S tells you the names and the symbols. Okay? Very good. So, one more time. Radon 222 has a time. The half-life of a Radon 222 is 3.823 days. Let's go back to here. I see we make it we made a mistake here. One half life of radon is not fifteen ninety nine. It's eight point let's just round it off eight point three days. Okay. Sorry, three point eight days. Okay. So now, 3.8 days is for a single half-life. So for two half-lives, you'll have double that, two times 3.8. For three half-lives, you'll have triple that, three times 3.8. And you keep going until you get to six half-lives, which would be six times 3.8 days. And that would be the time it would take you to decay 200 grams of radon-222 to 3.125 to days, if 125 grams. That's pretty much it. All right, let's go back to the questions. Here they are. Read those statements, determine whether they're true or false. Uh, take your time, pause the video, and that's pretty much it.